Oh, right here. Oh, really? Yeah, we were, we were trying to go over to Ike the other night. It was the night that we rang the you know. Yeah. Where's Yoli? And your boy Curtis. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Oh, sure. Yeah. Tell me everything I know. You got see wearing a Miami shirt? Uh, you know, you yeah. keep it, you know, when we beat North Carolina in basketball, you know, hey. we, don't, we don't celebrate basketball stuff. It's a March and April. Come on, man. I know y'all know we don't play that game. Oh, fuck you. But we know we're going to celebrate it's a March and April. It's a March and April. That's when it, we only worry about nine games. That's when it counts. Nine games, right? Preseason, right? It's all preseason. Nine games. ACC tournament, the sixth. Y'all been to this show? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're we gonna do that. We're 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 gonna do that. we no, you guys. No. It's always cool right? because they have all the people that have gotten their hair cut and some makeup done in here. They, uh, they see what you were camping like a Polaroid. So they're suited in there. And my boy Jimmy Graham right there. Who taught you that sweetie? My dad? Jimmy? Pete Rose. Oh. Some bullshit ass coach. Who taught you that sweetie? And he made him quit as a kid. I'm sorry, sorry about that. Just wait for you to tell you what the hell is that? I got your wife coming out. Yeah, so I was going to ask you about this. Yeah, he didn't do it. Did you run the break? Yeah, man, she's great, bro. Exciting. <laughs> You guys got the nursery all done? Say again? You guys got the nursery all done? Yeah, no, not yet. I didn't know you were done earlier. I knew that, but I knew that. I knew that. So he was already one. It's really cool. Oh, everybody's just. Oh, okay. So that's what you're saying. So he's saying he's going to go back. So he's going to go back. So he was like, so he was just. Oh, okay, because I was like, I was like, man, he ain't this even a right. no, He wasn't even. I talked to him. I talked to him. I said, oh, this is the right one. Oh, yes. This is not enough. Where did you get this? So join. Yeah. Okay, let's join. Did you get this? So maybe that's what it was on. I don't know where she got this. Barbershop. We're about to do, about to do barbershop talk here. Yeah. We're about to do barbershop talk here. Thanks, girl. Season two. Barbershop talk it starts now. It starts today. Season premiere. You got a slight bigger cast. Uh, different cast. We're missing Yoli right now, y'all's favorite. I'm not sure where Yoli is. Where's Yoli? Too expensive for today. She's too good for today. That's what happens when you. Uh, you cut people like C for whole career. That quote goes up and up and up. So, uh, so anyways, uh, we're here for Barbershop uh, Talk. Yeah. 2.0. Is that the Microsoft piece? No, I know. What? It's his personal one. Oh, it's his personal yeah, yeah. one. Oh, I, thought, I didn't know if it's personal or Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Let's think here. What are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about what are, what are the world issues today that we want to talk about? What, what in sports do we want to talk about? What in the world do we want to talk about? And... Uh, Let's talk about restaurants. So three three categories we got today, all right? Okay. For barbershop talk. We got we got sports. And we got uh, the world. What's going on in the world? And then we have the final issue is food. Like what restaurants? Or what restaurant? Okay? So sports, what do we want to talk about today? Anybody? Sports, what do you want to talk about? Super Bowl, of course. Yeah. That's what everybody's on everybody's mind. Yeah. Sure. We talked about the Super Bowl earlier. We talked about it a little bit in the car, yeah. Yeah. Who's going to win? We talked about that earlier already. But you already covered that. The Pats will win the Super Bowl. Um, what else? We, what other thing can we talk about though? That, that's that's the uh, that's the obvious thing we're gonna talk about. What else can we talk about? Serena. 
Ooh, yeah, I like the way you're thinking. Serena Edward Williams. Too. Serena. Yeah. Uh, you're one of the greatest athletes of all time. You're amazing out there. Uh, I hope I can be like you one day, all the championships. Um, you're a winner. Uh, your sister's a winner too, uh, Venus. You guys, um, you ladies, are, uh, are the, some of the most talented athletes to ever play any sport, male or female. And so we're grateful for what you have done, not only for females, but also for the African American community and uh, what, you, what you guys have been able to do for. Yeah. For sports and, and women playing tennis, you know, um, obviously in that sport especially, there's not that many African Americans that play tennis. Um, and you guys have changed the game and, and taken over, and and, uh, and really have changed the way that people look at the sport. I mean, and also, what you ladies have done just for women in general is really magnificent. You know, about the fact that uh, you know, just the fact that you guys have won so many championships and, and, and done it together as women. So uh, I think that's really really cool. To, uh, to be a part of and to experience and to watch. And obviously, Serena, you're super good friends with, with Sierra and, um, and me too as well. And so we love you. We're grateful for who you are as a person. And, uh, and, uh, you're so amazing athlete. So, yeah, inspiring for sure. What do you guys got to say about it? I told them it's too close. You had a few things to say about Serena. Oh, I was just saying, I mean, it's just incredible. She legitimately has cemented herself as the greatest of all time, in my opinion. No, I'm leaving before. Uh, yeah, you'll be I mean, fine. let alone just the yeah. mat, like the mat, she's won. Uh, but the Grand Slam, she's won. I mean, she is the best. <laughs> <in> there, <laughs> I think. Along, along with the doubles that she's You're won with her sister at the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's no one I think that ever can compare. Uh, her and her sister just absolutely changed the game. So, this is cool to see. It's cool to be able to be a part of that generation that watched her growing up from the very beginning. So, I mean, would you, can you, can you compare her and Federer? I mean, with them having similar runs, and but playing essentially the same sport, but, you know, obviously one thing. I think so. I think it would be an injustice. Like, it's, it's wrong not to try and compare them. I think they, like, just because they're, you know, a man and a woman doesn't mean you can't compare them. They both won, I think, almost equivalent number of titles. Um, so, you know, I think it would be pretty amazing to see them one day play, if that's all possible. Maybe for charity, for uh, you foundation, get everybody together. Can I make it happen? I'm very, very fond of my girl, Serena. Venus, too. You ladies together. Alan, what you got to say? Oh, I'm about to say. What you got to say, Matt? He's over here messing with me. Like. Actually, Frank? He's over here messing with me. Bro. I can work. <laughs> I've been working all of 15 minutes. In any case, Alan, uh, anything Sam Serena? I think mean? she's awesome. I think she's, everything that they've done as a family and then what they do for the community, like they really give back a lot. So on and off the court, I think they do some amazing things. So, two thumbs up for the Williams sisters from me. Well, I only did one thumb because I'm holding my phone. So, we'll yeah. drop the phone. Two thumbs up. Pretty much piggybacking off of what everybody said, but uh, you know, basically, like I think, I think the coolest part about what she's done is empowering women and uh, just standing up for. Uh, I think she's a great tennis player, but I think what she's done for for women in general has been. Uh, it's just been inspiring to see, man. Cause she's not scared. She's not scared to step up or, or speak up about any issue at all. And, and, and you know, she she basically is. is, a, is a, prime definition of a, of a bold woman that, that, that stands up for what's right and, and not only that but she takes the same power and force on the on the court as well so uh, it's just it's just inspiring to watch that's for sure super inspiring so congrats Man, Rod, you got anything to say? Time to get better. Do you talk about how you train with the same trainer, sir? These boys are just so. Next subject here. Next subject. We're going to talk about world world issues, world things. What's going on in the world? We're going, we're going to talk about Trump, huh? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Dive in. You know, um, obviously, uh, this whole um, Donald Trump, uh, Hillary Clinton, 
thing has gone on, and now Donald Trump becoming our president. Despite anybody's political issues or views, um, everybody has the right to choose who they want to vote for. But this thing's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand, people. I don't care who you vote for. I voted, I, just so you know, I voted for Hillary. Um, but um, when you think about it, it's only been, what, two weeks? Right, two weeks or even ten, less. Ten days. Or what's today? The thirty-first. Yeah. So, yeah. so last Friday. Eleven was the days. Yeah. We got to attack this issue here. So uh, basically, I, I think that uh, when you think about all the negativity that's happened within a, you know, a ten-day period, however many days it's been, um, it's already too much. It's already crazy. It's already affecting um, people's hearts and souls and lives. Um, in such a negative way, in my opinion, it's putting people um, and, and, and a chance to, you know, we go, we go, go, go to the LAX airport and there's people all over the place, you know, it's, you know, fighting for their lives, you know, and protesting and all that. And all the protests that have gone on, um, you know, all, all the protests that have gone on through the African American community, through the, the um, obviously the Muslim community too. Um, we're going to be a, a nation that says we're equal, we have to be equal. Obviously being smart of, you know, all that kind of stuff, but you also have to be able to treat people fairly. You have to be able to love everyone. And, uh, and you know, I, I know from even my own faith, you know, the Christian faith, we still have to love everybody. We still have to, no matter what their, well, no matter what our, what our issues are, uh, we still have to find ways to love people and care for people. And so, I think that's the thing that's been crazy already. I, I, I don't even know if he's gonna be able to last four years, in my opinion. Um, you don't want to wish bad upon anybody because if he doesn't last four years, that means that something went wrong. So um, hopefully nothing goes wrong any more than what it's already doing. But uh, it's just been a crazy ten days already. And uh, you know, um, Barack, come back, come back, Barack, come back, Barack. That would be nice. That would be nice. And I, and I think now people realize. I, about that. I think people now re realize how, despite people's, I think a lot of people now realize. I think despite a lot of people's um, political issues or views or whatever, people really realize how much um, President Obama was able to deal with the situation. Now, not every not, you can't you can't run a nation and everything be perfect, but I think people have a great appreciation of his class, his class. Of a class that he was able to deliver to most people and, and to be able to care for people. And same thing with uh, First Lady Michelle Obama, for both of those two. So now you kind of recognize that uh, people's feelings are getting hurt, people's lives are getting changed, people are getting, uh, you know, sent back or not let in um, back home to see their families um, for, for reasons that may not be worthy, you know. And so just because you you uh, believe in something, um, or you have, uh, or you're from a certain place, doesn't mean that you're a bad person. So there's a lot of things I could say. I'm sure uh, there's a lot of people that have a lot of things to say here. So barbershop talk, season two, we're going right now. We're talking about political issues. Alan, you're next. Oh, why? Why I gotta go next? I thought Mark was gonna go. <laughs> Hot seat. They're trying to say it's not a ban, so that's the big issue now. You know, they're saying that it's uh, they're vetting people differently, so they're holding people, and, and it's just the way people look at it. But I will say this: if it makes it a safer America, I think you know uh, that, that that's a big part of this that people are not looking at too. It's like you got to. I know lives and. and Misinformation is big right now, so it's kind of hard to like sit back and really, really sit and listen to what's going on as far as the media is concerned because they're going to tell you that this national security guy isn't briefed right now and this and this and, and, and you're hearing them go back and forth like I've never seen at the White House press conference before. It's like, you know, it's almost like reality TV with our presidency right now and it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of disheartening. I, I don't know, I, I really, I don't know what to even really say about it really. It's a uh, it's an issue that's pretty touchy for a lot of people, though. You know what I'm saying? Does he have a Twitter account while he's president? Oh yeah. Yeah. From my understanding, he was supposed to have to give his phone up, but most presidents, you have to give over your. He needs a new social media manager. That's all I'm gonna I think the job is open. I don't think you want that. Do you want to take that on? Absolutely. Okay. Bigger the bigger the job, the reward. Well, the real Donald Trump that could be your guy right there. That's the best. Start with a haircut. <laughs> Roman, what do you have to say? Alan, uh, first of all, go back. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wait. Did I, 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 I skate out of it? Yeah. 
Oh man, there's so much to say about this. Like, I'm very much a politics guy, and uh, there's a lot of unprecedented things that are going on right now. Unprecedented. Yeah. Unprecedented. <laughs> well, you know, I talk with a little twang, so get work with me a little bit. So, um, I actually. I, mean, I don't want to talk about the things that I don't agree with, but I actually am excited by the movements that people coming together and like really rallying and showing their support and love for ostracized groups of people. So I think that that is awesome. Like we have to learn how to use our voice and do it in a peaceful way, but let that magnitude of what Dr. King and some others in the past did really show the, you know, saying, the world and everybody that, you know what I'm saying, we, we not only stand for some of these injustices, but we willing to put our face and our names and things like that out in the forefront to support. So I want love to win. I want, like I get we got to have certain parameters and different things like that to, you know what I'm saying, protect us. But everybody ain't bad. Just because one person in a specific group of people does something doesn't have to apply to everybody. So... So I'm glad to see all of the airports getting shut down. <laughs> Sometimes I'm running late for flights, and so if it can happen on those days for me, then I can make my flight. Yeah. <laughs> Rohan, your thoughts right. on this matter? I mean, real simply, I think that their attitude, the Trump administration attitude is, let's just put something in place and we'll figure out how to solve the problems later. And I think that's just, like, caused this ripple effect of problems affecting families, tearing them apart. I mean, my dad came over um, on a green card, on a student visa, actually, uh, to study here from India. My aunt came here on a green card to live here, work here. Um, so they're from India, um, a predominantly Hindu country, but there's a Muslim population there. You know, what's stopping Trump from uh, pretty much saying, you know, no more Indians can come on visas or green cards? So that didn't necessarily affect me and my family directly, but it could. Um, I know people from Syria, I know people from these countries that have been affected, and it's just, it's sad to see that, you know, one guy who, you know, has this crazy vision about the world has been able to just change everyone's lives like that. Um, Mark was talking about facts, I think, um, and I think one fact is that you have one in, I think, a 2.65 billion chance a year in actually getting affected by a terrorist attack by an immigrant from one of these countries or a refugee from one of these countries. So if, you know, one in 2.65 billion is the uh, risk that Trump is protecting us from by putting this ban in, then I think I'm, I'd rather take the risk, one in 2.65, than try and, you know, ruin all these people's lives. So that's my two cents on it. Hold on, dropping the knowledge on y'all. 22 and genius. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, boy. Should we get Reggie with? Hey, Reggie. What up? We're doing this thing called Barbershop Talk right now. All right, we're definitely in the barbershop. It's the one and only Reggie Wayne, y'all. What's up? Barbershop Talk. The one and only, man. Who do you think is going to win, bro? I'm going for Atlanta. I'm going for Atlanta. I'm going for Atlanta, not because of uh, anything else. I just think it's their time, man. Offense. 33.8 points a game. It's going to be hard to stop. But it ain't going to be easy, though. But I got Atlanta. Yeah, Let's do it for Matty Ice, man. Let's do it for Julio Jones. Yeah. Come see what the league right now. I like it. I like it. Maybe it That's the one and only Reggie Wayne right there, folks. Legend right there. Yeah, legend. He was on the barbershop talk with us. Okay. Any, any other uh, questions on barbershop talk right now about what we've been talking about? What are, what are they saying? I just think. I just think also too. I, I saw something the other day where, you know, a four-year-old got handcuffed. You know, and that's ridiculous. The, the audacity that people would have to be able to do that, in my opinion, you handcuff a, a in person America. That, in America. Yeah, I saw that. So it's just, uh, it's just sad. You know, it's sad that, um, and I believe, I believe it was in America. I'm not 100 percent sure, but based on, you know, social. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, you know, just to think about the audacity that people have. You know, it's crazy. Hey man, I'm back in the barbershop. Barbershop. Ba back in the barbershop. Reggie Wayne. I'm sitting up here thinking about it. There's one dude in this room that had beat both of these teams this year. Much props. You know how to get it done. Show America how to get it done. Tell him, bro. Hey, hey, that's Reggie Wayne right there telling me how to get it done. Man, got to play great. You got to play great. You got to capitalize on opportunities. Um, we got two great teams going after it, obviously, this week. Um, we were fortunate, obviously, to go to Foxborough. Oh, it was a Monday night, right? Or Sunday night? Sunday, Sunday night, Monday night? Yeah. 
I think we played on Monday night the week before and went Sunday night. Right. And went there, Foxborough. I had never played in Foxborough before. Um, it was uh, actually the first time that we had, uh, you know, played New England um, since the tough loss that we had had. Um, and uh, so everybody was locked in, ready to roll, and we played a great game, lights out. So, and then obviously we, um, we were fortunate to beat uh, the Falcons at home, and uh, that was a great game too. So um, they're a great team. You know, I have tons of respect for Coach Quinn and the Falcons head coach. He's as good as it gets. He was with he was with us at uh, in the Seahawks, and then obviously Coach Belichick too. So um, you know, both of those coaches are you know, you know top echelon type of coaches. And so, uh, so anyways. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. Uh, we're almost done. Joe just wanted to. What about the top of my hair? Should we well, do he, has a, he has a one hey, man. Was, was it Joe? Was it Falcons sure. win? What time was it? Uh, it's 12.34. Right? So we'll, yeah, we'll get him. Well, we have to get him in makeup. Okay, perfect. What was that? And then uh, Joe's just keeping him on schedule as he's you know, supposed to, I guess. We got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> Anything else we should talk about about this issue? I think we can pick that back up several times throughout the day. We'll pick it up. We'll pick it up later. Okay, let's talk about restaurants, L.A. restaurants. Catch. LA restaurant. catch, catch is great. I haven't been there yet, but see, <gasps> it's I know. Good. I, I, I if you like seafood, it's well, I, I, I've been it's to catch, excellent. I've been to the catch in, uh, in New York. Yeah, one of my buddies owns it, and uh, was able to go there. That that catch is amazing. Um, so I'm assuming it's uh, kind of very, very. And you similar. said Delilah's was good. Delilah's was good. Delilah's is good. Delilah's has got a good atmosphere, a good interesting place. Uh, you gotta enjoy that place. Uh, nice guys, always good. Uh, so old house is great. What else is good? In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> <laughs> soup Plantation. In-N-Out Burger. Soup Plantation. Yeah. Love Soup yeah. Plantation. Bad Burger. Uh, no, we're like, like so like, house Soup Plantation. Uh, uh, Roscoe's. <laughs> oh, Roscoe's. Thank you. Jeez. Oh, There's a good spot named, uh, downtown named Maud. It's really good. Maud? They, yeah, it's really hard to get in. you got to get on a wait list. They refresh it each month. Like, really? It's a lottery. <laughs> they, uh, they pick one one uh, ingredient to like tailor all of their dishes around for the wow. month. So it's like a foodie spot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like something that you'd see on like Anthony Bourdain, you know? Um, yeah. It's like, like good food in Seattle. No, Seattle's a great food too. I like John Howard. I think I'm gonna open up a restaurant in Seattle. What do y'all think? Open up a restaurant in Seattle? People? Did you guys come? Open up good atmosphere, good food, great food. Good music. Would you guys would you guys come to? It? I, I think we should. Yeah, we, uh, everybody's behind you. I think that uh, we should ask them what what you should call that restaurant. Well, I'm not telling you what I'm calling. It. <laughs> Jeez. What well, cuisine? I'm a, American. I want them to guess. I'm not going to tell you too much, but I get ready. I'm going to open up a restaurant at some point in Seattle. I think. I think I've just decided that. So uh, right here. Yeah, but uh, you know what we need to talk about is Soto Arena. First of all, people. Everybody, Soto Arena needs to happen. We have the state of our arena ready to be built. We can get a team within a couple of years. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Talking about a state-of-the-art arena where everybody can enjoy it. Young kids from all over the state can come. We can have state championships there. We can have big events and, and great music. You know, uh, come there. You know, uh, just have tons of uh, musical talent, but also great basketball and great hockey. I mean, the sports. Sports change lives. Sports. You know, sport, music and sports really are the two big entertainment things that change people's lives, you know? Um, I know. I know how much music has gotten me through so much in my life, and then I know how much sport has given me an opportunity to do what I get to do today and talk, even talk to you guys today. And so, um, you know, I think about the young kid that wants to go see, you know, some, a great basketball player, a great hockey player, and Soda Arena, we, we can deliver that for you guys. So we want to make that happen, and so we need to get that street vacation. Everybody, I think I'm going to have people... I don't know. We need to find a way to make, make this happen. Seattle, we need to come together. Come together for me at least. Let's make it happen. Soto Arena. We got to make it happen for the for the young kids and and, uh, and just all the people who love basketball and, and all that. So, give it to organize. Get behind. Uh, get behind the movement to bring uh, the Sonics back to Seattle. Yeah, let's get behind the movement. Let's make it happen to to bring it to Soto Arena. Soto. You know, I start hashtagging Soto. Everybody, all my fans, all the all, my, all the Dangerous Wilson fans, let's start hashtagging Soto. Um, uh, let's hashtag Soto Arena, actually. Hashtag Soto Arena. Every time you tweet at me, hashtag Soto Arena, and uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll retweet you if I if I get to see it. So uh, let's make that happen. Hashtag Soto Arena. Um, so yeah, I think we're almost ready. Yeah, we're ready. So, we have, Joe wanted to remind me of that one of the calls. Okay, cool.
Right, yeah, Matthew, do you want to sign us off for this, okay, uh, this edition? Yeah, we'll be back after uh, Barbershop Talk. There's more behind the scenes. Comedy by Alan coming up. Okay. And uh, some heavy topics coming up, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. So, uh, stay tuned. Yeah. 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 Yeah